Welcome to the Oakley Podcast, Trucking, Business, and Family. This show is brought to you by Oakley Trucking, headquartered in North Little Rock, Arkansas. The purpose of this podcast is to communicate with Oakley owner-operators and their families by giving them up-to-date information concerning Oakley Trucking and the trucking industry. From business advice to safety updates to success stories. Also to give an insight to outside truck drivers that might be interested in joining the Oakley family. Hi, this is Jeremy Kellett, Director of Recruiting here at Oakley Trucking, and I'm your host for this podcast. This is episode 15, and on this week's podcast, we're going to talk to Roger Carson, our Safety Director. We're going to cover some important safety issues and topics and the FMCSA hours of service changes that are coming up, so be sure and stay tuned and listen to that because it's going to be some good information coming from our Safety Director here at Oakley Trucking. You know, but first, uh cover a couple things one is thank you guys for listening getting some good feedback on everybody listening to us and the word spreading and i really appreciate that that helps us know that it is working and and like i said in the intro it's always the purpose of this podcast is to communicate with our owner operators and their families and so you guys can learn more about oakley we can you know get things that are important to us relayed to you in a timely manner because all this is, is typically done a you know a week maybe two weeks at the most it's recorded ahead of time and, and it's pretty fresh information we we're wanting to get out to you so uh, one thing is I, I like to uh, give an update on is orientation we cranked up orientation again just a not a lot of people coming to orientation you know five or six kind of getting back into it slow but it is back on for you guys that uh, i know are listening that are anxious to come over here and we've got a, a list that we're trying to go by that that's uh branching out there pretty good way so it may take a while before you get here but be patient we're in the process of getting that done so we can get everybody uh leased on pretty soon and the freight's picking up seems to be a little bit and it's still nowhere near where we want to be but dispatch is sure uh having a lot better time than it did a couple months ago. Um, other than that, uh, you know, the virus is still going here. It's uh, We had one other owner-operator uh, that had contracted the virus but seemed to be in pretty good health. Uh, not a major problem with him right now. So other than that, we're, we're, uh, we're doing good. We're moving into the new office. Uh, this is something that's taking place, and I'll get with you more – when we get completely moved in in the new office because I want to make sure the owner operator knows how to get to the new office. It's a little bit out of the way, but there's going to be a a place where you can park towards the back of the new office uh, where you can come in and see us at, you know, at your convenience. Cause you know, I know it's with the new office being a little bit out of the way. I don't want you to think we're getting away from, the owner operators and having that communication with you because we need that. That's what this company is built on is is from our owner operators. You guys made this company and we want to be able to communicate with you best we can and and still have you coming in the office. So uh, anyway, right now let's uh, let's get caught up here with Roger Carson, our safety director, and get a little bit of information on these FMCSA hours of service changes that's coming up down the road later this year, but. Before we do that, I want to get a little history on Roger. So everybody probably knows Roger Carson, but let's get a little bit of history on how he got to where he's at. Roger, you want to help us out with that? How you doing, brother? Doing good, man. Appreciate you having me on here oh, today. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Glad you glad you could join us on this uh, newly podcast we're putting out to our owner operators. Give them a little bit of history where you started out. Uh, I know everybody, you know, from driving to to working and how you got to the safety department real quick. Well, Jeremy, I started uh, in 89 pulling an end dump, and I probably pulled an end dump for five and a half years. Benny Whitford started out as my dispatcher, and then Mac Holloman, and then I finished off with Don Griffin, and then uh, I was asked to come into the office, to work in the office, and that's been here ever since <laughs> everything that's when it all changed yeah. but yeah i've been here i've been in the office since 94 i dispatched in dumps uh, for about four years and then i uh, went into the uh, pneumatic division and was the operation manager for the pneumatic side 
till 01, and then that's when I took the uh, safety job. Got in the, okay, safety, that's when Ron Davis was here, and he, mm-hmm. he, he learned from him. A lot yep. of people probably remember Ron Davis that was with us a long time ago, great man. He learned from him, and then I guess when he passed away, you took over the safety director position, did you? And that was in 06, 07, yes. yes. Okay. And uh, yeah, Ron was a he was a good friend and a good mentor. I can still me. hear him laughing. Out oh of his yeah, office. <laughs> he just he you know he's like six foot six. And when he cackled, oh, you, know, yeah. you could just hear it ripple all across the all office. over the office. So, so yeah. how in the world did a truck driver become a safety director? Do you ever think you would be a safety director? Well, you'll have to thank Benny for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because when Benny asked me to do that, I said, Benny, I said, why would you want me to do that? He said, because you know how they think. You were one. Yeah. You know, you know where to look for mistakes and, you know, what's in their mind. And, you know, when they have trouble with their trucks, you know, you lived it. And and it's true. And, you know, and you, and you get that feedback, you know, when you do orientation uh, from new drivers because they're hearing it for some, from someone that's been there themselves rather yeah. than just reading it out of a book. That probably relaxes them a little bit to, hey, you know, he knows what we're going through. Sure he does. Sure he does. Yeah, I would think so too. I mean, boy, hadn't it changed a lot since back then when you were driving for Oakley and then now you're a safety director? Yeah, that's it's kind of strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of rule changes for me as well. <laughs> yeah. But uh but there again, you know, I'm I'm proud of the guys that work with us. You know, we've got a tremendous amount of good drivers that, you know, that are real conscientious about, you know, their job and what they what they do out there on the roadways. And in the same way with my staff. You know, I got some good people working with me and uh, you know, got a few other guys in my department that are ex drivers as well. And we got a few that's coming up through the ropes, and they're catching on pretty good. Yeah, it's all about having a good team behind you. That sure, sure it makes is. a big difference when you can have a good team helping you. Well, and, and man, having good owner operators that's that's got to make your job a whole lot easier. Is having some good owner operators that know how to take care of safety, and safety's a priority to them. You know, I, I go back to my dispatch days, and I think of my old buddy Monty Lee. I said, man, if I had 35 of these guys, I wouldn't have to do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to get that. But, you know, we do have a good group of guys here. And, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to be here, and I really enjoy coming to work. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it makes a difference when you got a great uh, great company backing you and great owner-operators to, to deal with because I'd say there's, there's probably some places out there we wouldn't want to be. Some bad companies oh, yeah. of bad safety yeah. records and stuff. Thank goodness we got a good safety record too. I mean, that's a whole other thing is is having our safety record be in good shape. You know, and it wasn't there for a while. Uh, we were over the threshold in a lot of categories. Uh, what was that a few years ago? I guess. Oh yeah, we've you know we've struggled with uh, you know hours of service was you know it was one that we had to deal with. Maintenance was an issue. And uh, but that was back four or five years ago, three or four years ago, I guess. Right, and you know, and what really helped turn that around, Jeremy, was you know this our CSA pay program. I think you're right, and and me and your coworker Randy Rama, we had an episode uh, on our podcast about that before, and got in detail with that CSA, and he said the same thing, and it, it really has helped. Sure, it has. Yeah. I mean, we went from a sixty five. In hours of service, to, and I think I looked the other day, we're at eight. Yeah, and for y'all don't understand that out there, that's good. Oh, that's go real. For, well. That's real good, you know, when you go because the threshold would be like 65. So, anyway, I, I'm sorry. I get a little bit off subject there, Raj, but I, I think it's good for our listeners to hear. And, and, you know, just to tell you again, we're sitting in with Roger Carson, safety director here at Oakley Trucking, and we're going to cover – a couple of things here to discuss safety. And so our owner operators know more about what's going on with the safety department here at Oakley. And what we talked about, we wanted to cover these uh, hours of service changes that are coming down the line. So let me, how about I just read those real quick, 
Rod, so we can uh, – I'm sure all of our owner operators know them, but let me just go through these real quick. It won't take but just a minute, and there's how many? Four of them. And then Roger can expand on what Oakley's going to do with these four changes. So this is straight from the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration uh, docket on hours of service for drivers. It says uh, FMCSA revises the hours of service regulations to provide greater flexibility for drivers subject to those rules without adversely affecting safety. The agency, number one, expands the driving window during adverse driving conditions by up to an additional two hours. Number two, expands the short haul exception to 150 air miles and allows a 14-hour work shift to take place as part of the exception. Number three, modifies the sleeper berth exception to allow a driver to meet the 10-hour minimum off-duty requirement by spending at least seven rather than at least eight hours of that period in the berth and a minimum off-duty period of at least two hours spent inside or outside of the birth, provided the two periods total at least 10 hours, and that neither qualifying period counts against the 14-hour driving window. That's a mouthful there. Number four, the last one, requires a 30-minute break after eight hours of driving time, in parentheses, instead of on-duty time and allows an on-duty not driving period to qualify as the required break. So there's your four new uh, regulations coming into effect later this year, and I'll let Roger expand on those four and, and how they pertain to Oakley. You know, this proposed rule probably came out a few years back, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, it was sent out for listening where people could uh, – you know, uh, respond to it, and over probably a year in the past year, it's taken that long to get to what they call the final rule, which is what I'm going to talk about. Now, as far as changes, and I'm just going to lay out the foundation of, you know, the hours of service as it stands now, you know, the 11 hours of drive time is still the same, hasn't changed. The 14 hour driving window has not changed. The 10 hour break to refresh your 14 has not changed. 60, 70 hour rule has not changed. And the 34 hour restart has not changed. You know, that's the foundation of the hours of service. Now, what we're going to talk about is, like Jeremy explained, is, uh, scope of the new rules and we'll start off first with adverse driving condition and you know they uh they're going to extend it two hours in adverse weather now whether it be a foreseeable or unforeseeable and you know in the past it was always a foreseeable. So thus for if your dispatcher dispatched you and he say from Little Rock to Memphis and he knew it was going to be an, a sleet storm coming into Memphis, then you weren't allowed to utilize that extension. As it is now, you, you couldn't use that. but As it is now because it's a foreseen condition. Gotcha. So, and and the way this new rule is coming about is that if at the time of the dispatch it wasn't known of the weather, then you enter into a sleet storm, then you would be able to extend your hours for two hours. And... uh the other thing they've added to that as well is you can extend it. You can't extend it due to rush hour traffic. So, you know, if you're coming into Houston at 5 o'clock and because of rush hour, you cannot use that extension to extend it two hours. But in the event of a 
accident where the interstate is shut down and it's something that you can quantify that happened, then you could use that extension during that time. So, man, that's a FMCSA kind of put it on the company. That seems like a lot of gray area there to where the company's going to have to, you know, verify that that stuff happened almost in each situation. Is that what you think? Yes, because now that's something I got to dig into to see if the guy actually was held up in a traffic accident or in a snowstorm where maybe he was just trying to get home and didn't have the hours to get home. That'll be the big one there. That'll be the one that's going to be the tester. Because, because if any of the none of these changes really, and I think that's one of the biggest gripes is I, I'm run out of hours and I'm an hour from the house. Right. So, and none of these really give you that. None of these will give you that flexibility yeah. to extend your, your drive time. Yeah. You know, just like PC, personal conveyance. Yeah. You cannot utilize PC to extend your 11 or 14. When your time is up, your time is up. But I think this adverse conditions needed to, definitely needed to happen because there's a lot of situations that that happens with. Oh yeah, there's there's you know especially in the winter months. Yeah, you know when you're running out west or up east or up north, you know you run into those situations where you could have made it in your you know your. A uh, fourteen-hour window, providing you didn't have that adverse weather. So we're going we're going to look at it case by case, you know. And you know, I think what we're going to do is, you know, if a driver thinks he needs to do that, he needs to get it, pass it through us before we'll let it go. Right, that's a good idea to you know, through dispatch or through safety, you know. Because I I can just see it, you know, turning into a uh, a problem, a habit, a a crutch, maybe of using it pretty regular when it's not necessary. Right. But you know, for the for, I mean, I think we got some good owner operators out there that are not going to abuse the situation. That's the deal, and it's it's easy to catch those guys when they abuse a rule. Well, yeah. You know this. I don't know. I mean, this this adverse thing at. I'm glad they did it. It just we got to make sure as a company that it's not abused. Correct. That, that's the deal. And, and like I told you earlier, I said you know if it's 90 degrees out, a snowstorm didn't keep you from getting to where you needed to be. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So, uh, okay. What about the next one? All right. Next one's going to be uh, it's the 150 air mile rule. That's really not going. And that's to... that's not really going to help us any because, you know, we don't currently utilize that. And, and the main reason why, Jeremy, is because we, uh, you know, we have a lot of short hauls, granted, here locally and elsewhere. But sooner or later, you're going to run out of that 150 air mile. And then once you do that, you got to go back to paper. So we're, we'll probably not use that. Better off just not even putting that in the plan. No, yeah. no, because it's it's just another paper chasing nightmare. Right. And you know, we've had that you know ability to do that in the past ten years with our guys that run local out of Little Rock, and it's really not really doesn't help us any wouldn't benefit anybody no because the way it is now you can only do it for 12 hours but under you know running a log they have 14 hours so it doesn't really benefit them the next one i want to talk about is the split sleeper berth which you know i think this is going to be a big benefit for everyone it uh Currently, you know, we have an eight and two split. And the way the eight and two works right now is you have to have at least eight hours in the sleeper that will stop the clock. 
And the easiest way to look at that is if you start your day at 6 a.m., you drive till 10 a.m., so you've used four hours of drive time and four hours off your 14. And let's say at 10 a.m. you go into the sleeper till 6 p.m. And it has to be the sleeper. It can't be a combination of off-duty. It's got to be a straight eight in the sleeper. That will stop your 14-hour clock. Okay. Okay. So at 6 p.m., what you would have left, you would still have seven hours of drive time left, and you'd still have 10 hours on your 14. That'll be helpful. Well, I mean, and that's what they currently have. And, you know, we utilize that, the oil field, when we were, you know, had quite a few trucks in the oil field in West Virginia and PA. Them guys lived on that split. Because, it, you know, they were going to sit somewhere, either at the staging pad or at the loading station for two hours. And then when it comes time, for, you know, at the end of the day, they just take an eight-hour break. And they go back to work. So it's it's a benefit. Now, what they've added in this in the new version is, you know, they're adding a seven and three as well. So... The way I understand that, it works the same way. You have to have at least seven hours in the sleeper. And the other three can be off-duty. And the way they've written this, and this is how I'm looking at it, you got eight hours in the sleeper, say two hours off-duty. You got seven hours in the sleeper and three hours off-duty. The two off-duty period times do not count towards your 14. So, for example, let's say you're at a shipper and you're there for two hours and you're off duty because, you know, you're waiting on them to... Just waiting. Waiting on them to get your load ready. Well, you can take that two hours and it does not count Towards your 14. Okay. So the way I look at that is you're basically pushing your 14 out to a 16. Doesn't mean you have 16 hours. It just means that you don't lose those two hours. So if you, uh, so that way you can utilize all your drive time. Well, and that would be, I mean, that's a big complaint. You know, these days is I'm hmm. sitting here at 3 a.m. or wherever for two or three, four hours, and it's burning up my clock. That's right. And and this is going to help that. Now, it, will it only be a maximum of two or three hours, or say I sit there four or five hours? Which I'm, Well, either way, I mean, you know, the eight hours will stop the clock. The seven hours will stop the clock. Okay. Okay. But what we see mostly, you know, on logs is, you know, two to three hours. But, uh, and they can utilize that as break time, however they want to do it, off duty or in the sleeper. And, but you're basically not losing that time. Right. Whereas you. Right now you are. Today you are because the two today on the 8 and 2 today, counts against your 14. But after September the 29th, the 2 and the 3 will not count yeah. against your 14. We need to reiterate that for guys that are just tuning in, just listening to us. I mean, mm-hmm. I know, they, I know they, they, uh, this is a recorded podcast, but this is not something that's going in effect today. It's not no. going in effect till September. Me and Roger Carson, the safety director here at Oakley Truck, and we're talking about – uh, the FMCSA new hours of service changes that's coming up in September. So we've covered what two or three of them. We got another one. Yeah, and, and let me you know, kind of reiterate here as well. I'm going to put a disclaimer in here. All right. <laughs> this is all subject to change. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course it is. It's early in the yeah. in the deal. I mean, there's a long time till September. We know. But you know, I was on a you know webinar last week with FMCSA and 
uh, this is this is what they're putting out. And you know, also uh, I've talked to some other colleagues about it, and you know, I think we all got a pretty good understanding, you know, what we're reading. Well, and though Roger, also, I'm a, am I right when just because the FMCSA comes out with uh, changes or things, certain rules does not necessarily mean we have to abide by all of them. We can have our own policy, right? As Oakley, as a company. Well, and you're right, Jeremy. You know, the FMCSA when they put regs and rules out there, those are minimum requirements. You can make the rule more stringent, like we have on our personal conveyance, right? You know, and, uh, but, uh, but yes, okay. it's like I say, it's like on ad- adverse weather. I mean, you know, we're going to make the call on that. Yeah. Because yeah. in the past, we've never had that rule. You know, it all comes down to, um, covering our tail to make sure when that dreaded accident happens that, uh, everybody is on point with everything and, and all the, you know, all the rules are met, all the logs are right, and, and the driver has done his job, dispatcher's done his job. And that that's for a whole other episode. We'll get into those accidents and things. I want to do that another time because we can spend a lot of time on that, and I know you got some good examples of what we've dealt with over the years of small accidents turned into big lawsuits and that thing. We'll, we'll touch on that in another episode because that's a – that takes a while. It may take two episodes. It may take two. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. So. so let's see. Let me cover the last one here on the uh, changes. Okay. It's the 30-minute uh, uh, rest break. So as you see it now, you're required to take a 30-minute break. It can either be off-duty or in the sleeper. It uh, has to be within the first eight hours of your day. So – a simple way to look at it is if you start your day at six o'clock in the morning, by two PM you gotta have a thirty minute break. Okay. Off duty. Off in duty or in the sleeper. Oh, either oh, one. Okay. Okay. And uh it uh there again, it just provides you a break. Yeah. They want okay. you to take a nap, get out and walk around, something right. so I'll sit there and drive for eight straight hours. Got you. There you go. Well, now you know what they're proposing. It is a eight cumulative hours of driving. Now, and, and you know, I was trying to wrap my head around that because you know, right now it's consecutive hours. So let me give you the example. So if you drove two hours and you stopped and took a thirty-minute break you could drive another eight hours before you had to take another break. Okay. Okay. And, and that's that's rarely done anymore. I mean, you know, it's rare that I see a guy sitting in the saddle for eight hours. Well, you know? what, what what's the – what was the driver's – the owner-operator, what was their gripe about the 30-minute break the way it is now? Well – they lost 30 minutes in the day. Okay. They didn't have a full 14. They only had 13 and a half hours. This change will give them that 30 minutes back, and here's how it, here's how it's going to happen. That 15 or that 30 minutes now can be utilized as on-duty time. Okay? It can be either fueling or... Fueling, loading, okay. unloading, you know, it can be considered on duty time or off duty or in the sleeper. Oh, you could still do it the same. You can yeah. still do the other okay. as well. So, and I think that's going to be a real, uh, real benefit for guys because, you know, they're not losing that 30 minutes anymore. They're getting it back and they can use it. Uh, when they're loading, unloading, fueling. I mean, it could be – I don't see it being part of the pre-trip because that's the beginning of the day, but uh, I think it will be real helpful for them. Yeah. And, uh, and you can also split the 30 minutes up. 
It could be 15 minutes on duty, and it can be 15 minutes off duty. So that sounds good. It sounds like it's going to be something that's going to benefit right. the and, operator. And the thing is, you you know, it's got to be consecutive. You can't use 15 minutes here and 15 minutes later. Oh, okay. It has to be 15 consecutive. So fifteens to make a thirty. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was reading that wrong then when you said that. So right. I was thinking you could split it up different times, but it's got to no. be. No, you can split it up, but it has to be within the thirty minute. Oh, okay. Time frame. Just doing something different. Right. I got it. Which you know, guy fuels and he walks in, grabs him a bite to eat, goes to the bathroom. You know, off duty, or he's off duty for whatever, waiting to load or unload. It gives them that 30 minutes back where they yeah. can use it like you uh, bet. where they need to. Right. right. That's a benefit. That's good. And and another thing back on the, uh, you know, on the split break, it kind of gives you the 14-hour rule. You know, it's always been a thorn in my side since they changed that in 04 because, you know, the 14-hour rule just, you know, there's not a big window. you got three hours. You know, you got 11 hours to drive. And you got three hours for loading, unloading, fuel stops, pre-trips, things like that. Well, with this uh, split break, you're going to be able to get that back. And what I mean by that is, and you hear it all the time, guy's driving, he gets tired, wants to take a nap. Well, man, if I take a nap, I ain't going to get my 11 hours in. Right. So they push to drive when they're tired. Yep. And this that with this split like it's going to be, they have a choice now. They you know if they feel like they want to lay down, take a nap for a couple hours, it's not going to hurt them because they can push the fourteen out two hours. So do you think our owner operators will utilize that quite a bit? You think that's going to change the way a lot of our guys log when this this comes into effect in uh, September? Uh, yeah. From what I'm hearing, I, I think it's out of the four that's been put out there, you know, the split break and the 30-minute break is going to be real helpful for our guys. I mean, you know, it's going to give them their 30 minutes back. And then, you know, when they feel tired and want to take a, you know, take a nap, it's not going to penalize them. Well, I, I'm just glad to hear that the FMCSA came out with Something that's going to benefit the driver. It seems like for a long time it's been against the driver, but I'm going to say they heard the driver spoke up when this was out there for them to to uh, call in, write in, you know, about uh, voice their opinion, and they did. And I tell you what, it, the changes are have been made, and it's going to benefit the truck driver. And uh, I sure am uh, glad they spoke up. Well, yeah, and, and you know. Uh, I do know Joe DeLoronzo, he's a FMCSA, he's their, you know, he's their chief uh, guy for the, uh, for a lot of this stuff getting done. I mean, I've been to several conferences where he's there, and uh, for an agent, he listens to the industry. And, you know, he, he's uh, made several changes, you know, personal conveyance. Right. You know, he's made a lot of changes in that that aspect of, you know, how that's played out. So, uh, so, so uh, yeah, it's it's great that they do because, you know, a lot of times you think, you know, they got their thumb on you and, you know. Yeah. When, when does common sense going to prevail? And right. Maybe, maybe it did a little bit here. So. It did. I think so. I think Sounds it'll great. benefit everybody. Anything else you'd like to add on that, Roger? Uh, as far as for the up came, uh, upcoming changes, no. I mean, uh, there again, uh, we'll probably get something out here once we get closer to the uh, the due date, September the 29th is when these, this, uh, these will go into effect. And then we'll get something out. We'll post it on the website, uh, try to get some uh, flyers out to the drivers, what have you. And there again, guys, if you, if you want to call and talk to us about it, you know, feel free to give us a call, and we'll be more than happy to explain it to and, you. And remember the disclaimer. And yes, it's subject to change. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Hopefully not, but possibly will. It's part of it. You know, it's, it's part of it. I, I can – what our owner operators need to know is we – we definitely try to do it for the best of, of their in their interest too. We want it to be good for them, you know, and also good for the company. And sometimes we got to meet in the middle on that. Yeah, and I I think you know these changes are a win 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 for both sides. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So, all right. Well, Raj, appreciate you visiting with me today and covering some of the safety stuff. I think it's good for our owner operators to hear this and. Thanks for sitting in with me and letting people meet you. Enjoyed it. And to you guys out there that's, you know, on the road, y'all just stay safe. Because, <laughs> you know, these are some crazy times we're in right now. All right. I appreciate all you owner-operators listening to us and, mm-hmm. and the whole audience out there, different people listening to us. We're, we understand that this is reaching out and touching a lot of people, and we're hearing that every week. Please share it with people. Make sure uh, – the Everybody's listening to it that you know. We we appreciate the feedback you give us. Please email us, call us, and give us some feedback on things you'd like to listen to. Uh, add to some of the podcast episodes we've done. If you've got some suggestions, let us know. We'd be glad to. Be glad. And even if you're interested in coming on here with me, a lot of times we look for success stories that uh, our owner operators are having and, you know, that have had while they've been here. Be glad to get you on and do an episode with you. So appreciate you listening. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Oakley Podcast, Trucking, Business, and Family. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate or review the show in the podcast platform of your choice and share it with a friend. We love hearing from our audience, so if you've got a question, comment, or just want to say hello, head over to our website, theoakleypodcast.com, and click the Leave a Comment button. We'll get you a response soon and may even share some of the best ones here on the show. We'll be back with a fresh episode very soon. Thanks for listening.